in the memory of late Mrs. Alka Hemant Patil. We are glad to present our audio articles for inspiring disabled persons to achieve greater heights in their career. Under the project of Client Service Department of National Association for the Blind, India, to empower the disabled in tribal, rural and semi-urban areas of our country. Neelam Kanga, 1917-1983 Mrs. Neelam Kanga, a very special, ordinary lady who made a big difference to the world of the blind. Working full-time at a travel agency, Miss Kanga got involved in voluntary work with the blind in 1948. Along with Miss Pilu Kambata, Miss Nargish Palkiwala and Miss Salma Chalisa, Miss Kanga worked tirelessly towards blind welfare and fundraising. In 1947, some blind students from the Victoria Memorial School for the Blind formed a blind men's association which gave birth to the idea of the first proposed provincial conference for the blind. Miss Kanga actively raised funds for it and helped in organizing it. She also participated in and supported the first All India Conference for the Blind at which NAB was brought into existence in 1952. Miss Kanga devoted her time to the Finance Raising Committee. Her pleasant personality, powers of persuasion and deep conviction helped her to approach business houses and individuals to collect funds for the blind. She participated energetically in flag day collections and was quite uninhibited in approaching people on the street, at the race course and at parking lots for the cause she believed in so deeply. Miss Kanga was the guiding spirit and the sole energy which propelled her associates and acquaintances, particularly her three close friends, to give of their time so unstintingly for 35 years. In addition, she herself actively assisted the managing committee of the NAB Workshop for the Blind Worley for about 17 years. In 1983, the gentle Miss Kanga passed away and Miss Palkiwala made a contribution and dedicated a fund to NAB in the name of her dear and selfless friend. The funds benefit blind women in need of medical treatment, education, vocational training, employment and economic resettlement. It was decided by Captain Desai, who was then the executive director, that the Neelam Kanga Prize would be awarded annually to three deserving blind women who were contributing meaningfully to society despite their disability. In January 1984, the National Association for the Blind posthumously honoured Miss Neelam Kanga for her exceptional work for the blind community. The citation reads as follows. In appreciation of her selfless work in raising much-needed funds and in recognition of her dedicated contribution as a voluntary worker, the National Association for the Blind, India, posthumously awards to Mrs. Neelam Kanga the Rustam Merwanji Alpaiwala Memorial Award 1984 given at Bombay on Thursday, the 19th day of January, 1984. H. J. M. Desai, Honorary Secretary, Vijay M. Merchant, President. Thus, Neelam Kanga lives on in the hearts of the people who have benefited by her devotion and hard work. To laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people, to earn the appreciation of critics, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a little better, to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is the meaning of success. Ralph Waldo Emerson Action is the antidote to despair. Joan Baez Vishaka Mehta a gentle little lady sits at a desk 
and listens with deep concentration. She takes decisions with confidence and guided by her assistant, signs her name on the spot where her hand is placed. Vishakha Mehta, the first blind lady to graduate from Bombay University through MMCC College, Ville Parle, Mumbai. The first one in India to pass her B.Ed. from Sadhana Education Society, Santa Cruz, Mumbai. Sponsored by the Government of India for her teacher training for education of the blind. One of the founder trustees of the Swar Ninad Samiti and the Atmonati Charities and the founder member of the National Federation of the Blind Maharashtra. These are some of the qualifications of the petite, unassuming Vishaka Mehta, who recently retired as the senior most school teacher from Srimati Kamla Mehta Dadar School for the Blind. Vishaka's father, Mr. Mani Lal Mehta, was an eminent lawyer, a freedom fighter, and an educationist, and her mother was a member of the Congress Party. Little wonder then that Vishaka knew since her childhood that when she grew up she wanted to be a teacher and a social worker. Vishaka was born with retinitis pigmentosa, a degenerative optic disease, and so she never found it easy to study as she could not see clearly. Her parents battled with every conceivable treatment for her eyes, including the administration of dreadfully painful injections straight in the eye. But the dreaded malady continued its destructive march. Vishaka was expelled from the local school in the 7th standard because of her visual impairment. This cruel interruption in her studies shook Vishaka's equanimity and robbed her of her confidence. The sudden awareness that she was different left her feeling bewildered and unworthy. Her sister's husband, Mr. Shah, who Vishaka was always close to, helped mitigate her misery by assuming the responsibility of educating Vishaka in Bombay. The fine December day that Vishaka set foot in the Srimati Kamla Mehta Dada School for the Blind, Bombay, marked the end of her life of dependency and opened up new, broader, if slightly uncertain, avenues. Vishaka was taught Marathi and Braille before being readmitted to the seventh standard from where she had been cut off so abruptly. She completed her SSC with distinction through an integrated scheme. Unfettered now by the limitations of her small village, Vishaka could dare to dream once more. But when she lost her father, the world seemed to be closing around her with murmurs about terminating her education. Mr. Shah once again came to the rescue and whisked her away, introducing her this time to NAB India. Dr. Rajinder Vyas, the development officer at the time, helped Vishaka get admitted to Meethi Bai College. Mrs. Nama Bhatt, the principal of Srimati Kamla Mehta Dada School for the Blind, also contributed greatly by advising Vishaka about her career. The undermining moments which she suffered due to her disability during her rocky college years added to experience, lessened vulnerability and made way for her maturity to shine through. Dr. Vyas continued with his support, supplying her with a talking machine to study by and also by organizing scholarships from the Government of India and the Lions Club to see her through her graduation. And Vishaka did graduate, setting records in distinction. A woman now, radiant and full of life and experience, when Vishaka joined the Dadar School for the Blind as a qualified teacher in 1972, she knew that her true potential lay deep within her, waiting to unfold. But now she had to shift homes every few years, living as she had been in working women's hostels. Vishaka experienced huge heartbreak due to the lack of sensitivity on the part of those on whose mercy she was dependent. 
and while the hurtful memories from this time and the time when Mr. Shah tried to arrange a marriage for her did leave their imprint, life for Vishaka had flowered and she was at peace. She immersed herself in her teaching and social work. Vishaka, along with Ms. Kusum Nayak, also a teacher and social worker, organized a seminar at Dadar School where Captain Desai, the executive director of NEB India, announced the formation of the Committee for the Advancement of the Status of Blind Women, CASBW. A member of the Federation of the Blind Maharashtra Division, Vishaka started a vocational center, Atmoniti, for the welfare and the uplift of the status of blind women. She also joined NAB India as a member of the Executive Committee and formed Swarninad um, Trust for the Handicapped which organized cultural competitions for the disabled. While the impermanence of her home still caused her pain, Vishaka worked selflessly for the disabled, sidestepping her own troubles. Her fortitude and deep faith furnished her prayer with wings and a friend helped her eventually to set up a housing colony for the disabled. In gifting a home to herself, Vishaka ensured her serenity away from the heat and dust of wounding comments. During her teaching tenure, spanning 28 years, Vishaka designed a pre-vocational training program for adolescent blind girls. She also designed a room for recreation using different indoor games to help blind girls gain confidence. As editor of Vishwadarshan, a braille magazine in Hindi exclusively for blind women and published by NEBCASBW, she helped to highlight the aspirations and the problems of blind women and create a platform for the ex exchange of information. She also compiled Hindi and Marathi cookbooks in Braille and developed a much-needed Braille shorthand in Marathi. Vishaka represented NAB India at several national and international conferences and seminars for the disabled. Today, she gives tuition, plays cards and chess, enjoys listening to the television and reading books. But her foremost passion to rehabilitate blind girls still remains her focus. She intends to accomplish even greater heights in this self-inspired domain. The Neelam Kanga Prize for Grassroot Work and Economic Rehabilitation of Blind Women, which Vishaka received in 1986, made her feel really happy and most encouraged. It served as the starting point for many other awards of merit in later years. Vishaka received the Best Teacher Award of the Blind Relief Association MM Chhatrapati Memorial Award in 1994-95, the State Award for the Best Teacher in Schools for Disabled by the Government of Maharashtra, the Sunita Singhanya Memorial Award for the Best Disabled Woman conferred by National Society for, the, for Equal Opportunities for the Handicapped, the Alpaiwala Award in 2001 for significant contribution towards the welfare of blind women, and several more from the Lions Club and the Giants Club of Mumbai. Vishaka views her role as that of a facilitator or enabler. She supports her protégé and empowers them to go to, with their heads held high through the doors she holds open for them. A highly respected lady today, Vishaka feels blessed in her blindness because of which she managed to come to Mumbai. Leaving her restrictions far behind in her little town with its cluttered lanes and the distant call of the papiha bird heralding the onset of the monsoon, it is through the beautiful gifts she brought to the world of the disabled that Vishaka Mehta has realized her dream. When one must, one can. Yiddish proverb. Panna Pomal. Time is the most valuable thing in our lives, says hard-pressed Panna as she copes with life on several fronts at once. 
her job as a music teacher her visual disability running her home and looking after her younger son who has cerebral palsy panna was 9 years old when she lost her sight to meningitis she was shifted to a school for the blind in ahmedabad where she completed her ssc ever since she can remember panna loved music she also had a strong predilection towards social work Though she completed her BA in sociology and political science, melody always held a special place in her heart. She attended afternoon college and taught music at schools during the day. Panna never had difficulty with her studies because her mother was a teacher and always ready with guidance. The staff too was always cooperative and very attentive. In 1981 Panna presented a paper on the social status of blind women at a conference held in Ahmedabad. She attended a conference held by All India Confederation for the Blind AICB in New Delhi in 1997. In August 2002 she presented a paper on problems and solutions of the disabled working woman. Panna is a member of the executive committee of Blind Men and Women's Association BMWA and NAB Rajkot District Branch. She is a life member of the Association of Blind Women Ahmedabad and the Blind Women's Council Delhi. She is also a member of Bhakti Nagar Mahila Mandal Rajkot. She received the Neelam Kanga prize for her significant work with blind women in 1998. At the time Panna was holding down a job which was 140 kilometers away from her home. She was cooking, looking after her blind husband and two children, one of whom has cerebral palsy and is completely dependent on her. Her oldest son is a photographer. I was not only glad to receive the Neelam Kanga prize she says but my will power became stronger than before and I felt empowered to face any difficulty the prize gave impetus to my social service whereby I inspired blind girls to achieve extraordinary things I am always ready to be friend philosopher and guide to them It is also due to this award that I am able to handle my handicapped child bravely. Panna's tight schedule leaves her no free time for pursuing any hobbies, but she always manages to spare some moments for the needy. She rehabilitates young blind girls by counseling them, teaching them to drape a sari, to cook and to look after their homes. Time and tide wait for no one. Panna says seriously, so I believe in utilizing every second of my life to do something valuable. In brief, I would like to use my abilities and my strength for uplifting the disabled and the poor. I also strive to be a good wife and mother to both my sons, particularly the little one, the light of whose light life I am. The winds and waves are always on the side of the ablest navigators. Edward Gibbon. Hira Mani Wadwa. In the office of the Bombay Municipal Corporation, Chembur, Mumbai, sits a middle-aged, small-built lady. She is the community development officer in charge of one of the most important departments in India today, education. The youngest of three sisters, Hira Mani was born sighted, but due to a high fever at the tender age of 1, she lost her vision. Her mother, a strong lady of compassion and wisdom, with with an ability to see beauty even in the face of adversity, eagerly took on the task of lighting the way for her child and firmly guiding her faltering little footsteps. Hira Mani grew up with a zest for learning and a positive outlook on life being comfortable with herself and full of confidence she did not spend time concentrating on her disability she was instead always sensitive to the problems faced by others and ready with help this gift of giving was the legacy her mother imbued hiramani with 
Hiramani cannot pinpoint exactly how the burning desire for social work overtook her. Perhaps it had its moorings in the fact that she faced life at its rawest as she grew, burdened with having to constantly prove herself despite her considerable talents. The desire for social work seemed to run in my veins. I just had to do it, she says. All through her substantial educational career and later at her job, the anguish Hiramani suffered due to thoughtless behavior helped her develop a strong understanding for facing and overcoming challenges. She completed her SSC from Chabildas Girls High School where she was a Red Cross volunteer and a girl guide. She then trained for two years with NAB India and took vocational training from the Central Training Institute. After completing her BA and MA in social work from Nirmala Niketan, she did her LLB from Law College and after that the one-year Women's Study Certificate course from SNDT before she passed the local government service course in training for the BMC. The main trust of the education department is to reduce the dropout rate of students in municipal schools. The children, coming from rough backgrounds and living in slums as they do, require very special sensitive handling. A daunting task in itself, but Hiramani, despite being visually challenged, is entirely equal to it. The seeds of discipline and good value systems have to become a way of life for our children from the start if our nation is to prosper, she says forcefully. She and her colleagues have a multi-dimensional job which begins with their visits to the slums. Here they hold meetings and counsel the parents of their students hoping to create awareness about the importance of education. They get sponsors to set up balwadis in each ward so that they can train the children from an early age and create a desire in them to attend school. They hold classes for children who are scholastically backward or deprived of adequate space to study. Vocational programs and free health checkup camps are also organized for the slum dwellers. The support for all this is provided by corporate houses, the Rotary Club, the Lions Club and other organizations whom Hiramani and her colleagues periodically approach on behalf of the BMC. Hiramani was awarded the prestigious Neelam Kanga Prize for Social Work in 1990. She works with a passion to the exclusion of all else, her sister says. I worry about her sometimes because once she had an accident while coming home and was unconscious for two days. So I remain tense now and stand at the door waiting for her to return. A member of the Lions Club of Chambur and a recipient of the BMC Award for Outstanding Work in Education, Hira Mani has also received the Lions and Rotary Club's Appreciation Awards and the Kamla Mehta Blind School Appreciation Award. Hira Mani believes in selfless service, actively participating towards improving social values and creating a positive image of the disabled in the eyes of society. For her personal growth, not content with the long list of qualifications she already has, Hiramani plans to achieve a PhD. She is fond of singing and reading and listening to the television. A true lady of substance, Hira Mani has effectively turned her vision into reality and made significant things happen for the singular benefit of the community at large. Hemant J. Patil Honorary Secretary National Association for the Blind, India